Hello, welcome once again. We were speaking about many modules, much electronics, and much sensors. The more sensors you have and electronics, the more problems, the more headaches. This is an example of that. Automatic air conditioning system for GM, for many cars. Many sensors over here on this side of the schematic. I will go through it. And then module over here, and another module for the blower motor. Now, when it comes to any module, remember I told you that either the computer module, a blower motor module, any module that has to be 12 volts first. So let's take into consideration first the blower motor. The blower motor can obviously go on for heat. It can go on to give you cooler air for the air conditioning system. What's the first thing we look for? Always look for 12 volts. So here it is, a 30 amp fuse. Look at the other fuses, 10 amp. 15 amp, <clears throat> 10 amp, 10 amp. That gives you a hint right away that this might be a problem spot. Why? Because this is a high rated fuse. It's likely to go when there's a blower motor. And blower motors drain or pull a lot of current, especially in high speed. <clears throat> so you always pay attention to the, the rating of the fuses. As we said, we need 12 volts to the, through this orange wire. Follow the, the arrows that I drew means that current flow is going through this. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> we have the ground going to a physical ground, which is the black wire going to G104. Where is it located? The left rear of engine compartment. Now we have two wires in the blower motor. <laughs> okay, we expect that. <laughs> A is purple and B is black. So one is a feed motor, MTR is motor probably, a purple wire going in and then coming out the return line. Motor feed, motor return. And ground goes to ground, probably some housing or something. Now, <clears throat> in order to get this going, as you can see, there's a module. Whenever we speak about something, remember I spoke to you about inputs and outputs. Here it is, it tells you input, so you know there's an input. <clears throat> the problem is, many people will look at this and say, what's PWM? Pulse width modulation. Pulse width modulation is you have that also on, on alternators. You have that in much electronics. Pulse width modulation it, on fuel injectors also. If you draw a pulse, this is the pulse. <clears throat> this is the pulse. This is the pulse, like square waves, except this is 5 volts, 0 volts. You can adjust this area. It's called the on time and the off time. I can either make this area, this pulse width, longer or shorter. I can shrink it or I can lengthen it. So when we do this, the on time, instead of this, will be this. This could be the on time. This will be the off time. You see, it shrinks. However you look at it, from this point to this point, always has to be the same length. What changes is the width of the pulse. The width of the pulse changes to make the blower motor into different speeds. High speed, or medium speed, or low speed. <clears throat> now, what's considered the input? So fine, now we know there's an input going in. How do you know? Because it says input. How do you know also? Because my arrow indicates that, that it's going in. Now, <clears throat> the most confusing is, if there's an input going in, that means somewhere there's an output going out. You can't have an input without an output. So now we go over here, we follow over here. Sure enough, in this module, HVAC control module. Where is it? By next to the next to the radio over here. Now, continuing in the saga over here, if there's an input, that means there's an output. Where's the output coming from? Right here. And even tells you pulse width modulation signal output. When you trace it, goes up here at the input. So who controls who? Not knowing too much electronics or schematics, you can figure out who's controlling who. He will be controlling him. 
Because when there's an output going into an input, that means the one that's giving the output will be the controller. He's a controlee, so to say. Now, this is just not based on simple facts. When you look at this module over here, there are many, many sensors going into it. So he's going to determine the speed of the motor by a pulse width that we just talked about, but it's going to be on certain conditions. Certain conditions meaning that now if we come over here, we see different... First of all, there's a power chain control mod, which is the main, main computer. It has to be that the pressure is correct if you're turning on the air conditioner. Here's the air conditioner. We have to turn on the clutch relay over here for the compressor, the clutch relay. So when you see positive over here, you trace it and you come down the line and it goes to a computer instead of a ground like this is a ground, it doesn't go to a ground, but it goes to a computer, and it says control, that means he's going to give the command to him to give it a ground. Whenever you see control line, that means he's the one who's deciding what to do with whatever is connected to it. So in other words, we know there's 12 volts here. We know that this needs a ground. We're expected to see a ground like this, but we don't. We don't see a physical ground. What do we see? We see a module ground. Again, the PCM ground det determines AC request signal. First of all, the switch is on. You're asking for, the, for, for air conditioner, either manually or automatic. In this case, automatic. And who determines that? The sensors. AC cycling switch signal. And also, there has to be... The pressure has to be correct, the high pressure and the low pressure that we talked about in a different video. So, now, otherwise also, class 2 means data is being spoken to. Remember, I made a video about talking to each other, the, the modules are talking to each other. As you can see, let me trace it, class 2, class 2 data. So, these two are talking to each other. Once he gets the sensors that he needs, he's going to talk to him and say, you know what, now I need a ground. So you see how confusing it is. The more electronics, the more sensors, the more problems. The best thing is if you have a scanner and you might be determined in a system or the, or the components or the sensors which are faulty. To do it at troubleshooting like this is pretty difficult. Now, if you look at the sensors... These are inputs. I'm not going to go through the wiring, but I'm just going to go through. Look at the sensors. Sun, sun load sensor. How many wires you see here? Two. The, and what's the symbol over here? This is an LED. That means it gives off light. Sun load sensor. Now there's another one. Upper discharge air temperature sensor. On top front center of dash. Behind radio in there. So this must be like... Probably something to in, to see if the, if the air is actually coming out of the dash, the vents, the vents on the upper. Now you have one, and this is a, a, a variable resistor, which is a sensor which gives back feedback to the module. This is another variable resistor. Now the lower discharge air temperature sensor on left side of floor. So this must tell the module if the air is coming out from the floor. Let's say you want a floor. The air to come on the floor. Let's say you want the air to come out on the vents. So it detects if there's actually air coming out. If that's not enough, inside air temperature sensor. Now, where is it? In roof over driver's drawer. Now there's another motor over here and another variable resistor. As a sensor, seeing how much the air is. Inside air temperature sensor. How much the air is. If that's not enough... Ambient air temperature sensor on right radiator. So this is the outside air. Where? On right radiator support bracket. So probably the hotter it is, obviously, the cooler the air that you need, the more the motor will work, and the more air you need through the vents. So if you... If you look at all these things, and I'm not going to go through the wiring, but I'm just gonna, you're just going to see what I'm talking, referring to.
The sun low temperature sensor, upper disc, what we just went through, all these sensors, what we went through over there, are part of the inputs to this. These are all inputs. Sensors are inputs. So what? how would I draw the arrow going in? How would I draw the arrow going in? How would I draw the arrow going in? Why? Because the sensor is giving information. This is a feedback. Then we have to figure out where it's coming from. But the most important thing is over here. There's a B plus going to this one over here, to the orange wire. Then there's another B plus going to ignition. So you need two 12 volt lines over here. So, and like I said before, if you come over here, there's another sensor. Air temperature valve sensor and motor on top right uh, uh, side of heater. So many sensors. Look how many sensors there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. It overwhelms you sometimes. Just to make the air conditioning go on or the, the, the vents go on to give you air. Through another module, module number one, Model number two, model number three, it's overwhelming sometimes. And this and this sensor over here. Then you have these vacuum control solenoid valve, lower rear of heater assembly, where probably it opens up probably the, the, the ducts or the doors for more air or less air, like you have in, mo in many other uh, places. So, like, I just wanted to make the point. Many people come and they, when I get the comments to get an, a brand new car, the brand new car will last and sure you won't have repairs. But remember 70,000 or 100,000 miles like the Toyota Camrys, the new, the new ones over the last three or four years, the dashboard is full of, of warning lights. Like the drivers always say, I take care of this problem, the temperature, uh, the tire uh monitoring pressure system comes on took care of that airbag came on took care of that then the abs uh, light came on the more electronics you have the more problems you will have down the line so if you're getting a new car great look what's going on with um with the toyotas the new express vans they said they go on fire because of problems with fuses the hyundas they said they go on fire because of fuses and electrical wiring the fuel pump problems in Toyotas and Hondas, Honda Accords have fuel pump problems. There's recalls on all these vehicles. It's not what it was 20 years ago. Even the Asian cars were just quality. But this is what we have now in store for us. So anyway, just to give you a hint, a hint, this is what you're getting today in today's car. The more automatic that you have, the more problems you're going to have down the line. It's great to have these features, right? But remember, that means if something is automatic, the first thing that should come to your head is a computer module, a sensor. Something has to sense something. A motion, the heat, the air, something has to be sensed. Remember, the word automatic to me always means sensors. So I hope this was helpful in a way. Good luck getting a new car if you want it. But remember... This is what you're going to be dealing with. And like I said before, we're going to be going to fiber optic instead of harness wiring. And you know you cannot have any obstruction in fiber optic lines. So that's going to be another problem. And like I said before, a 12-volt battery is going to be a 24-volt battery to help all the accessories. So if you have equipment, diagnostic equipment, it's going to be have to take 24 volts instead of 12 volts. So everything has going to be changed over in the future. Anyway, please, if you like this uh, um, video, uh, Joe, Electronic Schematics for Auto, and the other channel is Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Thanks for watching.